So I think that a lot of people may think that you can't actually get your custom shoes wet. However, they are totally waterproof. It's certainly not recommended that you wear them out in the rain or anything like that, but you can also actually clean them with any preferred sneaker cleaner and a soft bristle brush. And then we're gonna go ahead, rub a towel directly on top of them, clean them off, and you will see no paint comes off or anything like that. What's going on guys, Dylan DeJesus here, and today we're gonna be walking you through six of the most common custom sneaker myths. Starting off with the first myth, if you can't draw, you can't customize. So I think that this one falls in line with the age old question of, if I'm not athletic, can I still play a sport? And I think the answer to that is that you absolutely still can, you just may need to work a little bit harder than somebody who's naturally athletic if you're both trying out a new sport for the first time. And thankfully nowadays we have so many great tools at our own fingertips. You can use things like vinyl stencils to really help you out and build a great base. At the end of the day, you're still gonna have to get in there, really pack in some detail, have that steady line work, but all of that stuff is gonna come with a lot of repetition. We also have a couple great videos on an image transfer technique where all you need is a little bit of tracing paper and your phone screen or a tablet screen, you're gonna trace it out directly on the screen, transfer it onto the shoes, and then all you have to do is color in the lines. Number two, you need to spend a ton of money just to get started. I think that when you watch a lot of cool custom sneaker videos online, you might see a lot of great tools like airbrushes, airbrush booths, detail sanders, heat guns, vinyl cutters, expensive computers, tons of things that you may think you need just to get started, but in reality, all you really need to get going is a little bit of paint, a great set of paint brushes, a little bit of acetone, some of the other prep materials that you'll need just to make sure that you are creating wearable art, but you don't need all of this other stuff just to really get going, really get a feel for it, really start to get your feet wet and start to experiment with customizing shoes. Because if you haven't done something like this before, working with leathers and other various materials, it's gonna be very different than any other artwork you might've done in the past. And I know sometimes seeing some of those tools from your favorite creators online makes you wanna go and get those same exact ones that they're using, but that can begin to overwhelm you and potentially prevent you from ever just getting started. Number three is that you can paint any material just by doing this. So I think usually if you ever ask a question potentially in a custom sneaker forum or a Facebook group, something like that, you might be asking, how do I paint a certain material? And one of the first replies that you might see from somebody is that all you need to do to paint a certain material is just apply a little bit of adhesion promoter beforehand. But even though adhesion promoter is a really helpful product and something I use on a regular basis, it doesn't necessarily make any material paintable and just all of a sudden create a magic bond between your surface and the paint. This is usually paired with people wanting to paint midsoles and anytime that discussion pops up, you're definitely gonna hear, just apply a little bit of adhesion promoter and then you can paint the rubber midsole on an Air Force One or something very similar to that. And the way that people usually try to prove this method is by doing something like a scratch test, by applying a sealer and then you can rub your X-Acto knife on top of the surface. And although this is cool and shows that it will hold up to a little bit of scratching, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's fully durable and is actually gonna hold up once force and friction is applied and somebody actually has their foot in the shoe and is wearing it and there's all of these different forces applied to the shoe. All you're doing is there's a top coat that's protecting it from getting rubbed off with an X-Acto knife. So although a scratch test is very cool, it doesn't necessarily equal a durability test. Number four, Posca pens. Number five, just apply the finisher and you'll be fine. Anytime we're talking about finishers, I always like to think of the classic iceberg image. So we have the little peak of the iceberg sticking out on top of the water, and that's what everybody sees, and that's what everybody thinks is the most important part of the project, the finisher. But in reality, everything below the surface is actually far and away the most important part when pertaining to the durability of your custom shoes. So you have things like the prep work, using the right paints, using the right additives, painting on the right materials, and giving that paint plenty of time to dry. So don't fall for the common misconception that a finisher is going to save your project if you didn't handle everything else properly beforehand. Number six is that the value is based off the cost of the base shoe. This one is a bit more likely of a misunderstanding from the customer's or client's point of view rather than the artist or customizer's side. 
And really what I'm referring to is that if you potentially have someone reaching out to you for a custom Air Force One or a Jordan One or something like that, they have the price point of the base shoe set in their head. So whether that's a $100 base shoe or something along those lines, they can't help but get over that price point and they're not necessarily thinking of this as a piece of artwork, more so just another shoe. And I think what they may be forgetting is that what you're really purchasing here is a piece of artwork from somebody. And when you're purchasing artwork from somebody, you're purchasing so much more than just an object. You're really paying for all of their years of trial and error and experimentation, all of the years of frustrations and those moments of pure joy as an artist. And you're not just purchasing that one product from them, you're really purchasing a piece of somebody's life when you're purchasing artwork from them. So remember to keep this in mind, you're selling artwork, not just shoes. So those are six of the most common custom sneaker myths that we hear all of the time, along with that bonus one at the beginning of the video. Hopefully this cleared some stuff up for you guys today. If you guys haven't already, we'd truly appreciate it if you could go ahead and give a like on this video. Make sure you guys are subscribed and we'll see you guys in that next video. Thank you.